All right. I'm Tabby. I think I've met most of you before, but I am currently a developer at Clever. I've also been with Kelwin and a couple other local companies. And what I'm going to talk about today is doing your first interviews for becoming a developer. I had worked as a developer before, but I had moved up within the same company, so I found myself laid off, and I had never done the tech interviews before, and they're a whole different skill than coding. They're very, very separate, and if you've never done it before, it's a lot of like, what is happening? There's rules I don't know. It feels a lot like you're going to finals week for a class that you forgot that you enrolled in. <laughs> and have those nightmares all over again. Um, and it also, like, it, it changes up. I feel like every, like, five years, it kind of shifts how the industry is going to do those interviews. So I know it was different. Like, people have told me it was different five years ago. It's going to be different, like, years from now, probably even shorter. But there's just some key points that I want to say of just, like, other developers help me during my process of, like, okay, we're going to sit you down and talk to you about what the tech interviews are, give you some tips, because that's not commonly known. You don't get a pamphlet of, oh, you're going to code. Here's how to do the interviews, which someone should do that. <laughs> <laughs> it's a really good idea. Um, so like the current format I feel like now is there's usually about three steps. It used to be five. Five was common. Some places still do five. You'll have kind of an introductory call with a recruiter just doing the basics of, you know, what stack, what are you looking for? Um, you'll do a kind of a technical phone call with the hiring manager or one of the lead devs where they're talking more. It's more tech speak of what have you worked on before, the job itself, and then usually your third is a tech assessment of some kind. It'll be a variation of a leak code exercise, which if you don't know what leak code is, I kind of envy you. Um, <laughs> LeetCode has a bunch of interview exercises that are very short, bite-sized problems that a lot of companies take from to kind of judge your coding ability. Um, so if you haven't been on there yet, I would definitely go on there and just start with the easy. You can pick your language. It has a bunch of different languages on there. That's super common. Or sometimes you'll pair with a head dev, and they'll give you a very small, bite-sized project of, OK, we're going to sit here for two hours, and we're going to make this project together. And the main thing with that is it's OK to Google things. No one has all the syntax of everything memorized. Um, and so that's totally good. They don't look down on you for like Googling things where you're like, oh, hey, I don't remember how to do nested for loops because no one remembers how to do nested for loops. <laughs> Let me look that up really quick. That's totally fine. So I feel like that was the really, really common theme that I saw. And when I was looking for about a month, I did 75 applications, and I think I did 11 full interviews. So I just started noticing some trends between all of them. Now, you may be asking, like, okay, that's the format. That's the interview. How do I get an interview? That's also really difficult, too. Like, I see all these LinkedIn posts, but they say that they have, like, 400 applicants. Like, I'm never going to get contacted about that. True. <laughs> well, wait, there's more. So I, those 75 applications, probably about 70 of them were on LinkedIn applying for those things. And a lot of them, they aren't really full job applications. Some companies will put them up because it'll make them look good to investors to look like they're hiring. Um, sometimes, sometimes they're perfectly valid. They just can't get back to you because it's 400 applicants, and that's a lot for a recruiter to like answer every single one. So what I would say of like how to get interviews, your number one thing is going to be networking. All of my tech interviews came from knowing somebody, knowing somebody that knew somebody that knew somebody. Those mutuals are really, really important. And I'm a super introvert. So I understand, when I hear networking, I used to just like cringe and be like, oh, that means I have to talk to people. <laughs> That's hard. It makes me sweat. <laughs> but honestly, like coming to events like this are huge in networking. You're going to meet people. They're going to know people that maybe they know a job that that person's not a fit for. But they're going to be like, oh, I met this person at this event. And they said they did PHP or whatever it may be. And I'm like, yeah, I'm going to refer to that person. That's really where you kind of get those network connections. 
and also bringing LinkedIn with that, that helped me a ton. So definitely like the first thing you wanna do is get your LinkedIn super up to date with your job, fill out your past experience. There's a section on there now for projects, even if it's your first dev job and you haven't had a dev job before, that's okay. Put what projects you've done on there. Put the things on your GitHub that's on there. Um, and so that way people will go to your LinkedIn and see like, oh, that's your online resume. Like they've done this and this. Okay, I wanna talk to this person. You wanna make people want to talk to you. And now the other thing that I discovered on accident when I was job hunting was I was getting interview requests from my posts. So I had a lot of people, friends and family, that didn't understand how much work dev interviews are. So I started posting on LinkedIn. I would be like, this is the project that I'm working on right now. Here's the link to my GitHub, because I need to learn this tool, because a lot of jobs are asking for it. And I think it was Socket.io. I was trying to learn how to do real-time messaging. And so I started posting on LinkedIn. I was like, oh, this is what I'm working on. Here's the, here's the link to my GitHub. Here's what I have so far. And so I was doing that every couple of days. And I feel like every single time I made a post like that, I got at least three phone calls from that post. So I started kind of experimenting with that, like times of day to post, because I use social media, but I'm not a social media marketer. I don't know any of the rules. I'm sure there's people that know exactly what day, what time is best to post. Um, I'm not one of those people, I was just playing with it. But I feel like just posting what you're working on and being excited about what you're working on is gonna get you a lot of interest in conversations and conversations and requests because if you set those posts to public, people that aren't in your network are gonna see that as well. Which I didn't realize because I was like, I don't know that person, but I'll talk to you, cool. All right, <laughs> get some interviews that way, so that, that's also good. Um, and then when you're applying to jobs like this and you're having conversations, it is really easy to forget what company people are from that you are talking to. So I would definitely recommend keeping a spreadsheet of who you're talking to, what the company is, what the company does, and maybe something that you remember from them and what stack because I was like, oh, I can keep this straight. Like, I talked to this person for a while. It was great. And I was like, oh, God, what stack were they using? Ugh. So I would definitely do that with even just your LinkedIn conversations of, okay, I vibed with this person. It was great. Um, and so I would also say for, we're going to get kind of specific for interviews. There's a dev panel next weekend that's also going on that will cover a lot more, like, in-depth aspects. But as far as going into the dev field as a you know, non-male developer, we're the minority right now. I think the last thing I looked up was tech workers, not software engineer specific, but just tech workers. I think women still make up about 26.7% of tech workers. And so you're gonna be the minority uh, my husband was going through interviews right before I was, and so we started comparing notes, and I started noticing things where I'd be like, do you get asked this? Because, mm. And so I kind of like, I, I learned a bit from that, but also just the thing of, uh, like I did a couple of like in-person interviews, I did online interviews, and I only had one interview, the tech assessment portion, that had another woman in it. They were all men, and I remember I was in one interview, and I was sitting in a room of, it was five to six men, and then one virtually, and I remember having the thought, I was just like, oh, okay. And I know, I've talked to other people, and I know that makes some people super uncomfortable of sitting in a room of men like that, and that's totally understandable. I personally don't have any advice on not feeling uncomfortable with that. I, if anybody else has advice for that, please tell me, or tell other people, because I don't know, but I think just going in kind of prepared for that, that's gonna be kind of your norm, at least for now, until we can take over. Because <laughs> I feel like our numbers are increasing. It is getting a lot better, but, and sometimes it's not that they don't have non-male devs, it's just that maybe they're not on that team, maybe they're not in that department. So you can always ask, you know, what is your company doing to further diversity? Or diversi yeah, diversify, it's a really hard word. Um, you can always ask that, because I've asked that before, I have forgotten to ask that before. 
Um, and so that's kind of a way you can kind of, okay. And then also I would advise, people usually don't do this on purpose, but there are interview questions that are illegal to be asked um, as far as, um, you know, race, gender identity, sexual orientation, marital status, child status, that sort of thing. Um, I haven't really had that issue. I know a couple people have. I also don't accidentally volunteer that information, like just in conversation. I won't be like, oh, my husband loves that color. Or, you know, it's so easy to do that, but I don't do that. It's just a personal choice. It's okay if you do. Um, that's just something that I don't do. It's something that sometimes will come up. Um, but it is illegal to ask that, and it's okay if someone does ask you a question like that to be like, hey, mm, no, that's, that's not an appropriate question. Um, but I feel like that's gotten a lot better, at least in the last like five-ish years. Um, but the biggest skill I would say going into interviews is, yes, you want to be studying while you're applying for interviews, studying your tech stack to kind of, and the terms to keep that fresh. You want to be studying your leak code. But also, I kind of tell people to come up with two little speeches. I don't know what, I want to find a diff better word than speech. Yeah, yeah, the spiel. Yes, there we go, that's good. Elevator pitch, you're gonna need two. They're gonna be similar. You're gonna have one for your non-tech people, so that initial phone call you have with the recruiter, they're not coders. They're not gonna care if you go into detail that you use this library and this framework and this thing on your project. They're gonna wanna know your main stack, if that matches up with what the hiring manager gave them to look for. So I would have your definite elevator pitch, I like um, for your non-tech person of just make bullet points, your main points, because they also score you on if you can get to the point and have a conversation that's coherent. I didn't know this till recently, but some places actually do score you on that, of just how quick you can explain something. And then I would have your second elevator pitch to be for the tech person. That's gonna be that second phone call with the hiring manager. Now that's when you can still keep it concise, but that's when you can go nuts with the frameworks and, oh, I just learned Socket.io and it does this and I'm so excited because they love when you're excited. They love when you're passionate. And especially emphasize if you're going in as a junior dev that you love learning, like I learned this and I'm excited for this opportunity because I can learn name a tool that was mentioned to you before by this company. <laughs> I'm excited to learn this and I'm gonna learn this because no one's gonna go into a dev job and just know everything and be able to sit down and code because you know every company has their own things that they use, their own methods that they use, but especially with junior devs, they know you're gonna need some help, they know you're gonna need some training and that's okay, but be excited about that because that's gonna make them excited to help you, to teach you. They're like, oh yeah, this person's excited. Yeah, this is gonna be great to work with them. So that is just, that goes so far. It's just being excited and I know it's hard. I, as an introvert, had to learn to limit to no more than three phone calls a day because by that fourth and fifth phone call, I'm just like, I'm so excited. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I love, what are we talking about again? <laughs> Do I do Java? No, it's JavaScript, yeah, JavaScript. <laughs> So that helps as well if you're introverted like me. Um, does anybody have any questions for me, for tech interviews? A lot of information at once. What was your favorite one, Clever? So Clever was definitely my favorite one by far. Um, I feel like sometimes when you apply for junior developer jobs, the assessments and tests that they give you aren't really for junior developers. And I thought Clever's was very appropriate for the level that they were hiring for. It was also a three-step one, just like that. Um, and so that made me, like, I felt like we had a good vibe of, okay, they know what level they're on. But also, if you, that's a good point, because if you get an interview where you feel like, I'm a junior dev, I don't know what they're asking me to do. I'm gonna bomb this. Sometimes that's okay. I got callbacks from places that I barely finish the project, or I finish it wasn't great, or yeah, if you're a junior developer especially, you get a lot more like leeway with that. But Clever definitely had a really, really awesome uh, interview process. Felt more like a chat and less just kind of like, okay, I'm being interrogated, I did something wrong. <laughs> but, yeah, 
feel free to hit me up if you have any questions. Um, I don't know how long this information will be good for because uh, it keeps shifting and changing. But I wish everybody luck. Remember to take care of yourself. Have breaks. Decompress when you're job hunting because it's a lot. So definitely take care of yourselves during this process. Thank you.